Some of you may remember this thrift store lamp that appeared in my spooky chandelier video. Well, the time has finally come for it to get all gothed up. First, we're going to carefully cut apart this Dollar Tree skeleton. and temporarily relieve him of his arms so that we can cut some bigger holes. Then we're going to give the rib cage a bit more flexibility by cutting the spine down the middle. With the torso on the lamp, we can give him his arms back. We'll need them to make sure he's at the right height. Then with some E6000, we'll glue wherever the torso is making contact with the lamp. and give it a little while to dry before gluing and zip tying its hands into place. While that's drying, let's just add some glue to the joints to make sure they stay in place as well. And after a few hours, it should be dry enough for us to remove the zip ties. And add a bit more glue around the edges. We really want to make sure those hands stay in place. Then we're going to take some air dry clay and smooth it over the neck area. We'll want to add some glue to the edges of the clay as well.
And with that, we'll let all that glue finish curing overnight. Now we're going to want to protect all the metal and electronic bits with some tape. Then we take it outside and spray paint it black. Of course, we'll want to stop and let our local butterflies inspect our work from time to time. Once it's dried, we can make it shine with some silver rub and buff. Next, we're going to carefully remove the outer fabric of the lampshade. Then, we're going to take apart some of these cheap document frames from Dollar Tree. Some of you may recognize these frames were used in my glowing coffin DIY. But for this project, we only need the glass panes. 
Conveniently, this glass was the same width as the lampshade, so I only needed to mark two spots. And we're going to use those spots to dictate the cuts we'll make with our glass cutter and turn it into a trapezoid shape. This was my first time cutting glass and I was pretty surprised at how simple it actually was. Here you can see the tool doesn't actually cut the glass, but rather scratches into the surface, allowing you to break it in a straight line. And I repeated this until I had four glass trapezoids. I did mess one up and ended up with a curved break instead of a straight one. Luckily it wasn't too bad and it'll be covered up anyway. Now I should go without saying that freshly broken glass is sharp, so we're going to sand down the edges with some fine grit sandpaper. For the particular look I want for the glass, we're mixing Mod Podge and some food coloring. This is going to require a bit of shaking. Maybe a lot of shaking. And after what felt like an eternity of shaking that left me feeling like my arm was about to fall off, we finally have it all mixed. Now we want to protect the bottom and top edges of the trapezoids with tape since we'll be gluing those later. and we're going to give a couple of coats of glass frosting to one side of the trapezoids. This is to help diffuse the light a little and obscure the bulb when the lamp is on. While those were drying, I did some testing on the scrap shards of glass. Now we need to glue the trapezoids in place with the frosted side facing inward and the untouched side facing outward.
here you'll be able to barely see this troublesome trapezoid started cracking a little when I put the clamp on. Fortunately, it stopped just short of breaking completely. We'll just let that be the back of the lamp. Now, with those glued down, we can start painting the outside of the glass with our mixture of Mod Podge and food coloring. Now testing it out with the light, I decided it needs a second coat. And after letting it dry, we can start making a paper template for the frame we're going to make. A little trick I learned from art class back in the day, do one side in dark ink so you can fold it in half and just trace it on the other side for a perfect mirror image. And now using an X-Acto knife, we cut it all out. We also need to make a template for the corner connector pieces of the frame.
Now we're going to take some sheets of crafting foam and trace our templates onto it. Then using scissors and the X-Acto knife, we cut them all out. Be warned, this is where you might get a hand cramp, so take plenty of breaks. Now to add some more depth to our frame, we're going to make some templates for extra pieces to layer on top. and then we glue them on. We'll also give all the pieces a coat of Mod Podge to get rid of the foam texture. Now, getting the corner pieces to stay bent was a bit tricky, but I think I found a decent method. I'm using a plastic scraper tool to press a line into the foam so it'll bend straight. Then I'm adding a wooden stick to the inside of the fold to give the piece some extra strength and using a ruler to help keep the foam bent evenly. To keep it in this position, I'm hot gluing it a section at a time. And now we have a proper corner piece. Just gotta finish coating them in Mod Podge. And once they've all dried, it's back outside for some spray paint.
While they're drying, we're going to slide some foam slivers in between the corner edges of the glass panes and glue them into place to add some stability. We're also going to paint some of the fabric that might potentially end up peeking through the gaps in our frame, just to be safe. Now with the frame pieces all dry, it's time to glue them to the lampshade. We're going to want to get all the details too. And a bit of tape to keep them in place. We can go ahead and hot glue the top flaps down while the E6000 glue dries. Now we should be good to hot glue the corner pieces into place as well. Once that's done, we apply silver rub and buff to the frame just as we did with the base. And here it is, the completed skeleton lamp. This was by far one of the most complex DIYs I've done on this channel, and the most time consuming to edit. There was at least 7 hours of video I had to cut down for this one, so please do me a favor and like the video, post a comment, and maybe share the video. Help me out with that YouTube algorithm for all those hours spent. And a big thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping support me and my projects. Patreon supporters get early access to videos, as well as various bonus content including an extended rough cut of this project that shows the whole thing from beginning to end, but sped up, so unlike me you don't have to sit through 7 hours of it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you my creepy comrades in another video.